Welcome to our Vault Shorts. These are shorter episodes highlighting programs and resources here in our Billings and Montana community. Joining us today to talk about the Rocky Mountain Women's Business Center is Cassie Strong. The following is a Big Sky Economic Development production. It's Mars B. And Cavo. And this is The Vault at 201 North Broadway. A business podcast. Where we bring you entrepreneurs, small business owners, and community leaders of Montana. To share their stories, expertise, industry insights, and strategies. And we are sharing them all with you every single week. You don't want to miss this. Learn how to better start, manage, and grow your business. And your leadership style. Tangible takeaways to save you time and improve whatever it is that you're working on. You're listening to The Vault. Thank you to the Small Business Development Center for sponsoring The Vault at 201 North Broadway. The Small Business Development Center offers free personalized support from business plans to financial projections and beyond, empowering small businesses to thrive. Reach out to us at bigskyeconomicdevelopment.org. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to have you here with us today. Me too. I always look at the vault and I'm like, I want to be in there. Oh, so fun. Now, now you're in. Now you, you are. Got an invitation. <laughs> we love that. So welcome to, yeah, our vault shorts. We're excited to talk to you about all the things that you're doing. So if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about what you do with the Women's Business Center. Yeah, so Women's Business Centers are SBA funded programs similar to an SBDC and we serve women all across the state. Our goal is to help serve the underserved and provide um, business coaching and educational opportunities to help women start and grow businesses. I love that. So you did mention the SPDC. So what, um, we have very similar missions, right? Help people start businesses. Yep. <laughs> What's the diff, what sets your uh, services apart from the SPDC? Yeah, it's a good question. I think you know, we work really well together since we, we have love those. <laughs> yes, since we have the same goal. We, um, our services are obviously guided towards women. So that's who our audience is when we're creating programming. So we can be a little more specific um, on women's issues. And we serve the entire state instead of being focused on a smaller region of the state. I'd say those are the main, um, main differences, yeah, main upfront differences. So as you guys, so not knowing a ton and maybe our audience doesn't either. Can you just talk to us a little bit? I was about to ask you like a hundred questions at one, so I will, <laughs> but how are you guys struck? So you're under the SBA, you service the state, like how big is your team? Yeah, so we, um, our program is hosted by a nonprofit called Accelerate Montana. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Yep. And yeah. Accelerate does a ton of different economic development things, workforce development, all sorts of different programs. Yeah. And so the Accelerate Montana umbrella is huge, but our program just has two full-time and two part-time staff members. So we're a small team, but we're located throughout the state and are able to do things digitally, which is really exciting. That is cool. So you're located in Billings, so do you, and you service the whole state. Correct. Cool. Yep. Our business advisor is in Phillipsburg. Oh, fun. Yeah. What a cute little town. That's really cool. And how did you get involved with the Women's Business Center? Yes, good question. When I was in college at the University of Montana, I participated in a program called Pursue Your Passions, which was just kind of a women's club of sorts. Yeah. And um, I started my first business through that program. It was called Crepe Cuisine. I sold French crepes at oh, the farmer's cool. market. And it was so sweet because everyone's happy in Missoula on a Saturday next to the everyone's river. Everyone's happy eating crepes. crepes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen someone sad or <laughs> no. angry eating crepes? No. Yeah, it was awesome. So I started my first little business and then I kind of just got the bug. I was studying psychology, thought maybe I was going to be a counselor, but my family is full of um, business owners. And so it kind of kind of fit the lifestyle I was looking for. And in college, I ended up working for the Pursue Your Passions program. And that down the line turned into um, the Women's Business Center once they received that grant. So I've been teaching courses for them since I graduated college 10 years ago, and they keep roping me back in. So when this <laughs> position opened, um, it just felt like a good time to make that switch. I'd been working as a digital marketing consultant and was looking forward to getting back into supporting women in the um, on the business side of things, not just marketing. I love that. So uh, one thing I wanted to touch on is you mentioned it a little bit earlier, the different challenges that women business owners encounter. Can you share a little bit about what some of those challenges that you see are? 
Yeah, sure. Man, I feel like I could talk about this all day, but one of the stats that I like to kind of throw out there is that it wasn't until, um, I believe the 80s, shoot, I should have this number off the top of my head, but in the 80s when they developed the Women's Business Center program, that's when women were first allowed to get a bank loan for their business without the signature of a man. And that's like not even really history. It's just I think recent I just saw time. that yeah. stat. It was like yes. 1974 or something right. like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll. Which Google is insane. The, I don't know. Kayla 70s or Google 80s yeah. or something. But like I saw that and then it's like thinking 100 years. It was like 100 years ago women could vote. vote and I'm like, wow. I know. That's really not that long ago. Exactly. And so, I mean, it just makes sense that we're still trying to catch up. I mean, there are women who are in the prime of their career right now that we're adults when that change happened. So it's no wonder that women are just a little bit less likely to choose to pursue those types of businesses that require loans, require um, risk, and um, not to mention the other societal pressures that just happen to fall on women, like raising children, Mm -hmm. as we know, or a variety of different things um, that might prevent someone from making those choices of running a big business. So in the Women's Business Center, my position especially I'm just passionate about helping women build big businesses if they want to yeah, or build small businesses if they want to. I just don't want someone to build a small business because they feel like that's the only choice they have. Mm-hmm. Personally, I love Main Street Business. That was my first selling French crepes. And I think that's what I would choose to do again. But I don't want someone to feel stuck in that just because they don't know what else to do. They, yeah, letting them know they have growth opportunities. Yes. So maybe they start out as a Main Street business, and mm-hmm. then maybe they get a brick and mortar. Yep. And maybe they end up selling their crepes in Costco. Yeah, exactly. You never know. Yeah. Pretty big, right? <laughs> right. And what are some of those services that you do? Because this is a different world for me. I do like the marketing workforce yes. development. So even for those listening, if they're like, oh, this sounds like someone, like I need to talk to Cassie. Like what are some things that you help them with in And I know it's probably different for each person Mm -hmm. because no one's the same, but like what are some of those service offerings? Yeah, so all of our services at this point are free, which is really exciting. So women can um, meet with us and me or my business advisor, Marguerite, one-on-one as many times as they like. Marguerite's awesome, love her. she is, she's the best, yeah. (laughs) She is the Women's Business Center. (laughs) Um, But she, either of us, we can help you with um, everything from deciding, you know, what type of entity you might want to create, how to take those first literal steps to starting a business. I think that can feel so overwhelming. Anything from that all the way to understanding your financials. Maybe you're like, man, I'm making some sales, but I still don't have like any money. (laughs) Where's my money going? What's going going on? We can help you understand that. Um, That happens more often than you think. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. Or maybe you're on the other side and you're like, I have this awesome product, but no one is buying it from me. Mm -hmm. We can help you come up with the marketing ideas or sales strategy. Or maybe you've been in business for 10 years and you're ready to make the next step. Or maybe you're ready to back down from your business and you're interested in selling it. Or who knows what your next, um, next steps are. We can help you all along the way. I love that. I just pulled it up so I could say yes. everybody. So, so tackling back, the executive order was in 1979. And then in response wow. to that, 1988 is when the SBA created the Women's Business Center. So Yes. Wow. So that is like recent history. <laughs> and it just makes sense that there's still a little bit of a mental, like a mentality behind um, women running larger businesses. So there, yeah, there is. And I, I, we, we love to deal with women that are in male dominated industries, Mm -hmm. uh, and just see the ripples that they make in that industry because they're out there kind of being a catalyst for other women in Mm -hmm. that region. And Mm -hmm. so we have a, uh, a woman who operates an asphalt company and she has an amazing story about how she still battles, Mm -hmm. um, that mentality in that industry that she's just a woman and she's like, I'll get out here and I'll probably do this faster than you can. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, so along with that, you also host a slew of different types of trainings. Can you share, uh, with the listeners, what kind of trainings they could expect to be taking, um, from the women's business center? Yeah. The way we do it right now is each month we have a different topic that we focus on based on what our clients are currently struggling with. So, Right now, as we're recording this, our topic is um, social media. So we have some events upcoming. We do um, kind of a digital lunch and learn with a professional who will give the participants something they can go and work on like immediately after cool. that call, which is really exciting. And then we have kind of more of a panel event where we bring in three or four professionals and um, a woman 
business owner who's skilled in that area. And then they're able to give little tips and tricks and then answer really personal questions from the participants. So we've had a great turnout, but nothing that's so big that we can't um, focus in on people's individual questions, which has been exciting. And then we also do some, we're trying to bring in more live in-person Yeah, because those are digital, right? Yes. Those other ones are yep. virtual. So then that's nice with your guys' reach of yes. being statewide. Exactly. So big. Yes, I know. Yeah. So we can have anyone um, from around the state join those digital events. They're free. And um, hopefully we'll just keep adding more of those to our calendar, which is exciting. I think last month we had three people from Dixon, Montana, that oh, like didn't, awesome. e- didn't even know that the other person was going to be on the call. So it's just so cool to <laughs> and see And they those. all know each other. Yes, of 100%. course, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and to find those, they would go to Rocky Mountain Women's Business Center.com. Yep. Rocky Mountain WBC dot org. Dot and you guys org. just hosted one here, right? Yeah. Like uh, in person. I heard nothing but great things about it. Yeah, Kayla and I yes. did it together. It so was so fun. We Yeah, we recently hosted a, a women in business group called E3. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yes. Um. You know, I made that uh, acronym and now I can't remember what it stands for. So. <laughs> it's like elevate, elevate empower, empower, and educate. educate. Yes. Yeah. It kind of goes we with our that mountain theme. Yeah. <laughs> We practiced. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so our, I don't know. My goal is just to bring women together because I think we're just feeling, people are feeling lonely. And entrepreneurship can feel really yes, lonely. And yeah. Sometimes it's hard to even break out and, and find others. Exactly. And what I realized leading up to that event was that these women, they're lonely and they want um, connection, but also they're so busy and some of them are moms and some of them have other jobs and some of them have parents they're caring for and whatever it might be. And so I'm just trying to think creatively about what it can actually look like to bring women together. And maybe it's not the typical business after hours, Mm -hmm. you know, drinks and networking setting. Maybe it's something totally different. Like a brunch on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or maybe like a midday um, lunch. I, I think one of the ideas that was brought up and and it was like, maybe we could do like a speed dating networking (laughs) event. (laughs) I don't know. So there's just, I think we can be creative and post COVID there's just an opportunity to like re-break into that space. And Mm -hmm. um, I'd love it if we could create something in Billings that then my team could um, redo in other places that they live. And we could kind of create this movement across the state for people. Women in business. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have so many, I mean, Billings, but just all across the state. Like I follow women entrepreneurs from different, like in Bozeman and Mm -hmm. Eastern Montana and other places. And like, they're doing really big and exciting things. And I think giving them spaces to one, connect with each other. I think they're really, I I think Billings, at least I can't speak to everybody else. I think it's in a lot of the other state part of the state, but supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, coming to like if something chic has an event like a lot of other women entrepreneurs in our community are coming to her event and then yeah. she'll go to theirs and like they're just there to support each other yeah which I think is so magical yeah it's cool. exciting because it feels like like we can all win you know yeah it's not like there's oversaturation of women-owned businesses so we can <laughs> <laughs> we can all do it and support each other and I think it's fun when you are at a business and I don't know if you know Somehow you can find out that it's women owned and it's exciting to yeah. see those pop up in your community when you start to pay attention to it. So when you, we say women owned, I know there's different like government categories. So can it be like a women owned business that is it like 50% or 51? And then like if it's like maybe I think of even Card Setter with Josh and Jessica, mm-hmm. I don't know what their ownership looks like, but there's two of them. One's a guy, one's a girl. Sure, like, one, what does that look like? One's a veteran and one's a woman. Uh-huh. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> they get a lot of grants. Now. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. yeah. Um, they, um, so our services, while they're created for women and issues that women potentially face, we're open to serving anyone. So we do have male clients cool. and we have a lot of clients that are couples um, or partnerships. And yeah, we don't turn anyone away. So if you resonate with our messaging and you're passionate about supporting women or you're passionate about growing your business, like we can help you. (laughs) I love that. You have also have a program called Funding Foundations. Yeah, that sounds cool. Can you share uh, with us more details about that program and how it is benefiting women business owners? Yeah, sure. So we're um, working on this program. It's a pilot program with the Real Women Collab, which is at the University of Montana, and 
their program is designed to research ways to help women in entrepreneurship and leadership in Montana or the northern kind of rocky states. And so we're working with them on this program. We're providing the services, but what their goal is really is to research if there's a way that we can educate women, help them prepare business plans and financial models and understand how to pitch their business so that they have higher Mm -hmm. success rates gaining um, the funding that they might be looking for to move their business to the next level. So I'm not sure, you know, what, if this program has legs to continue on into the future or not. But for now, it's an exciting opportunity to research how we can help get more money in the hands of women. And I think it's important for me to say we don't believe that women are like need more education and that's why they need, you know, haven't gotten any loans. It all just goes back to um, like generations of women not being able to find the services to get those, get the education or, I don't know, set themselves up in a position. I was just recently talking to a mom who was like, you know, I'm smart. I understand the numbers. I understand my business plan. I have all these things, but my credit is tanked because I put myself through college when I also had three kids that I was raising. And so like, that's a real thing that she's dealing with. And how can we help women like in those situations become more bankable because they are going to be smart with the money, the loan that they receive to grow their business probably going to be able to make money faster when they have that loan Mm -hmm. that allows them to buy more equipment or, you know, have more inventory on the shelves. So how do we set those people up for success in the eyes of like traditional, the traditional Mm -hmm. banking world, right? Because obviously we don't want to tell lenders just to throw money around either. (laughs) That's why they they don't let me lend money to people. I just help people get their (laughs) packages. Yes, but there's like a hustle to these women that they're like, no, I'm like doing it. I've just had to do these things because of life's life's circumstances that, you know, we can't control all the time. And um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So how can we help give women just a little bit of a leg up? Um, Unfortunately, sometimes it means we have to work harder than if we weren't in those life situations. But um, I love that. I don't know the grit that shows through that. So I love that. What excites you most about your your job? Oh, um, I love that we can change lives, but I'm not like in such a high pressure situation that I'm like saving lives, you know? <laughs> like yeah. I can leave work and think like, wow, like someone's life is changing because they're starting a business and generational wealth and their community is going to experience less crime because now there's a grocery store or like whatever, you know, yeah. it might be. But also if I don't send an email like by Friday afternoon, it's cool. Like yeah. it's okay. <laughs> I know People it's not life live. or death. Yes. Yeah. Or not. yeah. Yeah. So it's just really empowering to see the big changes that can happen. And I, I love to say, um, who gets to say their job is helping people make their dreams come true. And we do. And yeah, that, that is one so of the cool. greatest things about, about it. And that's what really fills my cup mm-hmm. is every day we're helping someone make a huge impact on their lives. Yes. So. Yeah. I Without it being a scary medical situation. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So do you find that like with your clients that you have them and then they kind of launch out or are they, you know, just ongoing um, and maybe yeah. they come back to you? What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, we see kind of all over the board there. We have some people that we joke, they just come to us for counseling when they're like stressed <laughs> about their business. They just come we're in just and we're like, need to talk sometimes. about it, <laughs> need to bet and then move yeah, on. We're yeah. like, okay, let's, let's lay those thoughts out and figure out which ones of those are actually a concern and which you can just like, you know, <laughs> stop worrying about. So we have some clients like that. We have clients that come in and they have a very specific need and we might give them, you know, connect them to a resource or Help them with projections. Yes, exactly. Or- Give them something they can fill out, worksheet, whatever that might be. And, you know, they might come back in a year and have another thing that they want help with. So it's kind of all over the place. And we're here until you don't want us to be anymore. <laughs> I, I always say for us, it's as much or as little as you need us. Yes, we're yeah. here for you. <laughs> exactly. And That's then really cool. if you feel like you've graduated from us, then we're just going to rope you back in as a presenter or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so Keep you're you never, connected. You're never gone. Yeah. You're always there. <laughs> yes. What are like, are there other things that you're like, I think it's important for people to know about the Rocky Mountain women? Women's Business Center. Yes, I think um, it's important to know that it's a free program, but I also sometimes think like when people hear it's a free program, they don't maybe think it's super valuable. Like these services, we could be charging hundreds of dollars and, you know, for our our online events and we could be charging thousands of dollars for our coaching, and, yeah. but that's not the point. And so I want people to know that we have truly valuable 
uh, materials and, and experience. You experience. guys are all, most yes. of us are business owners, previous exactly. business owners that yep. have been in, in the trenches as yes. well. Yeah, exactly. So we have those experiences. And I also maybe would just say that it's a good way to just not feel alone. Um, we can connect you with other women who have been in your shoes. Last week we had three just info sessions about one of our programs coming up and so we weren't even teaching any material and the connections that were made on those calls were so valuable. Cool. And um, so there's just, yeah, there's always people to connect with and you don't have to worry about doing it on your own. You can come find us and we can help you. And you're like the connector. Yeah, it's fun. Which is really <laughs> like a fun role to have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for being here today and sharing a little bit more about the Women's Business Center. Yeah. Um, let's repeat, where can people find you? Where can they get connected? Uh, where can they find out about more trainings? Tell us all the things. Yes, I'd say um, first step, follow us on our Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, which is at Rocky Mountain WBC. Ooh, I mean, um, yeah. Yes, that now. Yeah. <laughs> we post all of our trainings and, um, you know, blog posts and that kind of thing there. And then you can also find us online at Rocky Mountain WBC.org and you can sign up for our newsletter. Um, we also have a digital just kind of online community space. It's similar to maybe like a Facebook group, but it's on its own standing app. And there's some resources on there as well. So if you visit our website, you can join that group. And a newsletter, I'm guessing that's really valuable. Like, yes. I mean, like, of course it is, but it's like, what a great <laughs> other way to get information right in your inbox yep. that you can look at when you have time, if it's in the morning or at lunch or whatever it is. For sure. Yeah. Have links to sign up for our digital training so you can hop on, do that right away. And yeah. Also Delivered right, right to your inbox. Yes. yes. <gasps> and other programs from partners um, as well, we share in our newsletter. So cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for doing what you do. <laughs> yeah, yes. Thanks, for the women for in our me. state. <laughs> Thank you. It's been fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, check her out. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you are subscribed to The Vault at 201 North Broadway, wherever you podcast, including YouTube. Connect with us on Facebook at The Vault at 201 North Broadway and Instagram at The Vault underscore 201. Don't forget to visit us at thevault at 201.com and subscribe to our newsletter. We will see you next time. Bye. Thank you to Big Sky Economic Development for supporting The Vault at 201 North Broadway. Big Sky Economic Development provides leadership and resources for business creation, expansion, retention, new business recruitment, and community development. If you are starting a business, growing or expanding your business, diversifying your customer base, or maybe you're looking for business trainings to attend to continue to learn and grow, they're excited and here to help. Even if you're thinking of relocating your company into Billings, they're a resource for you. BSED also provides resources for community development initiatives by planning, partnering, and managing projects, and administering grants for redevelopment and placemaking. Their workforce development program brings together industry and education partners to anticipate and respond to community workforce needs. And they provide talent attraction and retention resources for your business to use under the community brand Better Off in Billings. BSED's Rock 31 program is focused on helping startups thrive. And in their location in downtown Billings, they have two floors dedicated to co-working and additional spaces throughout their building open to the community to host their meetings, events, and trainings. Visit BigSkyEconomicDevelopment.org. Again, that's BigSkyEconomicDevelopment.org or follow them on Facebook and LinkedIn.